in this week's news roundup. TDC wins case against Carter Holt Harvey, alarming cyanobacteria growth, and Grey Power President wants strategy for Nelson's elderly. TDC has this week won its case against Carter Holt Harvey HBU Limited in the Environment Court, which has upheld TDC's refusal to grant a subdivision of the Bajent Reserve at Kena Peninsula. Carter Holt Harvey, which owns 10.7 hectares at the western end of Kena Peninsula, which includes the LEH Bajent Memorial, proposed to subdivide the land, but which drew strong opposition from many locals. The court has indicated that a costs award is likely to be appropriate. And latest testing of the rivers in Tasman for cyanobacteria producing blue-green algae has revealed alarming results, with rapid growth in the Waimea River from less than 20% to almost 60%. This rapid growth is however limited to an area from Bartlett Road to the river mouth. Elsewhere in the river the coverage is very low. The incidence of the potentially dangerous algae in over 70 other sites on rivers sampled recently around the region is low and well within guidelines, except for the lower Sherry River where the coverage was exceptionally high at 80%. The other rivers, including the Wairoa, Roding and Lee, are as safe as they've always been, and with a little caution, they're safe for all to swim and enjoy as normal. The council is placing signs in the main access points in areas that pose the greatest risks to dogs and small children. And Nelson Grey Power is going from strength to strength, with numbers expected to reach 10,000 by the end of 2013, and with a new president and a new executive team on board. I spoke with President Neville Mayle this week, who believes what's needed is a strategy for the region's elderly. That's a big part of what Grey Power is here for, is to represent their interests and to make sure that there is a voice for our older persons who can in fact uh, meet with local government, make representations to central government and generally speaking be an influential voice as far as issues uh, are concerned that old people are facing. I mean it may be said that you know it's always the same old issues being raised but I mean they're issues that deeply affect elderly and um, obviously we need to change in the sense that, um, as you've mentioned um, earlier, is that we need a strategy for older people. We do, and, and you're quite right that, uh, that these are not new issues. I mean, uh, if, you, if you went back 20 years, I'm sure people 20 years ago who were in the older age group would have been saying that their cost of living was too high, etc. So you're absolutely right. I mean, this is an ongoing issue. but. Uh, what is happening, of course, is we're having more and more people coming into that retirement age group. Uh, the population of our region, because it is such a popular area for people to retire to, is increasing substantially and proportionately against other age groups. It's becoming the largest of our age group population. So alongside of that, there are more people that are going to be uh, faced with issues around uh, how they can afford to live, taking into account all of the costs uh, that they're, they're faced with today, let alone what might happen in, in the next two or three years. You're right about the need for a strategy. We do definitely need to have a strategy. Grey Power, as an organisation, uh, has the ability to take a lead uh, in doing this. And in fact, what I'm proposing now is that there be a strategy adopted for uh, the longer term in the Nelson, Richmond, Tasman area where uh, there are specific uh, goals and objectives laid down in a strategic plan that address the issues that older people will be facing in the future. Tasman District Council's Dry Weather Task Force convener Dennis Bush King has moved to introduce further water rationing measures across the Tasman District. He says the absence of any serious rain since the middle of January means things are dry and river and groundwater levels continue to drop. He says they're moving to stage two for the areas of the Waimea Plains that came into restrictions last week, maintaining stage one in the Mulchery Western and Eastern Groundwater Zones, and will be introducing stage one restrictions in the Lower Confined, Hope, Motupiku and Upper Motueka Water Management Zones.
And Minister of Conservation Nick Smith has just announced the stunning Queen Charlotte track in the Marlborough Sounds has officially become the 21st great ride on the Nga Heringa New Zealand cycle trail. He says the 70 kilometre mountain biking track runs from historic ship Cove to Anakiwa in the Marlborough Sounds, offering some of the best views you can get over the Queen Charlotte and Kinapuru Sounds. Nick Smith says the Queen Charlotte walkway has been at the forefront of the biking revolution sweeping New Zealand and allowing mountain biking for some years. Parents of students at Parkland School have become so fed up with the NovoPay debacle, they this week organised a learning strike which was due to take place on Friday, March 1st. Schools around the region have been taking on extra staff to deal with compounding problems associated with NovoPay and parents are concerned the situation is detracting from their children's learning. Mainland Television's Chrissy Small went to Parkland School earlier this week. Hayley Wilson, we're outside of Parkland School and you have drawn some immediate attention. What is all that about? Um, it's about the teachers not being paid properly by NovaPay. What is going on for the school right now? How is it affecting the staff and the morale here? Um, in the last pay fortnight we've had 60% of our staff at the school, including cleaners and teacher aides and things, be affected in their pay by either overpayment, underpayment, some way or another their pay has been financially affected. So you have, you're not a part of the board at all, but you are a concerned parent who has decided to be proactive about this. I have. I've got five children at the school and I decided that this is a bigger picture now. It's beyond a joke. It's going to start affecting the children and it's affecting the teachers. We need to support them. And the campaign to curb drunken disorder in Nelson City may be making progress, but police are not about to back off. Nelson Bay's Area Commander Inspector Steve Greeley has just issued a warning to firearms licence holders, particularly aimed at young males, that are coming to the attention of the police. Inspector Greeley says a process has been implemented whereby licence holders would be flagged as soon as they come to attention. He says for low-level offending first time, they'll get a letter explaining that their behaviour is putting their firearms licence at risk. Inspector Greeley says if they re-offend, they'll be up for consideration of revocation. Serious offenders could be revoked immediately. Inspector Greeley says he believed this move could strike a chord particularly with young males who valued the right to go hunting. He says that some of these people don't make any connection with breaching a liquor ban while they're out on the town and their right to own and use firearms. Inspector Greeley says what they're saying to them is that they believe their behaviour in every part of life needs to be exemplary in order to retain the privilege of a firearms licence. Figures for the Tasman District show that 56 people had their firearms licences revoked last year. And the Herald has just plotted the seven deadly sins across the region, with Nelson ranking highly in the pride stakes. The data shows Aucklanders have higher rates of sinful activity per capita basis than anywhere else in the country. In the pride stakes, Auckland came first with 111.9 luxury cars sold to every 100,000th person. Meanwhile, Nelson comes in ahead of Christchurch and Wellington, which a local car dealer says could be caused by the large amount of wealth over a relatively small population. And after the break here on Mainland Television News, Council projects under 2% rates rise, and we discuss the digital switchover with Mainland's Managing Director, Gary Watson. TV in the South Island goes digital on 28 April. If you don't have Freeview, Sky, Igloo or Telstra Clear TV by then, this is what you'll see on your TV. Hi, I'm Duncan from Health 2000 Nelson and Richmond. At Health 2000, we are the experts in your good health and well-being. If you have questions about natural health, we can answer them. Health 2000 Nelson, Motueka and our Richmond Mall store is now by the new entrance. How happy are you with the quality of your digital prints? And how safe are those precious memories stored on your computer? Hi, I'm Simon from Nelson City Cameras. Quality 6x4 prints are easy using one of our eight photo kiosks. Join our loyalty club and print 30 photos or more, and the photos are only 39 cents each. As a member, you also get 50% off enlargements and other great benefits. But wait, there's even more. Our user-friendly kiosks allow you to create photo books, photo gifts, and even canvases. If you need a digital camera, binocular, tripod, 
We have a great range and selection, and our advice is free. We have a fantastic range of photo albums and picture frames to suit your needs and your budget. So print your memories. Don't hide them. Relive them. Come in and meet the team at Nelson City Cameras, Nelson's most experienced camera shop. 25 years serving Nelson. FAV Mobile Solutions are the scooter, walker and wheelchair specialists for the Nelson region. Call in and see the huge range available. Take one for a free test drive and pick up your free booklet guide. They also provide a rescue service if you ever get a puncture or a flat battery. Come in and see Robin and the friendly team at FAV Mobile Solutions in the Richmond Free Car Park opposite the Old Town Hall. Nelson Mayor Aldo Michio says council anticipates they can deliver an under 2% rates rise this year. Yeah, that's right. We had a two-day workshop for the annual plan to get the drafts ready to put out for public consultation. And so it was a public workshop and we had members of the public there. And we went through the long-term plan um, and we went through some items that we, that whether or not they fit the purpose or not of local government. Uh, most we decided still do, or probably like 99% of them. Um, but there's other initiatives that have carried on for the initiatives over the last two years where we've managed to save costs and gain efficiencies. And so we're quite confident that we'll be able to deliver, you know, no more than a 2% rate rise. So, so we're hoping that the draft will be finalised and put out to the public in early March. And so we hope hopefully the um, rate rise will start with a one. So it'll probably be the first time in about 30 years that's happened. I think in my first year as mayor, we delivered the lower, lowest rate rise in 20 years, which was at 3.5% rate rise. And last year with the floods, fortunately, it was about 5%. And so hopefully this year we're back on track to um, get, that, get those rates as low as possible. And now we have a chat with Mainland Managing Director Gary Watson, who will explain the digital switchover in layman's terms. Well, the countdown is on before analogue TV channels will be turned off on April 28th. And here in the studio today we have Director of Mainland Television, Gary Watson, and he's going to explain to us in layman's terms how we can make that switch. Well, one of the things, Joy, is that the government has been promoting it as going digital on the 28th. The fact is we're already digital, so is Freeview, so is Sky. Okay. What is happening on the 28th is the analogue signals are being turned off. Okay. So therefore digital will be uh, the only option for people to receive a television program. So the bit of confusion there, we've had quite a few people very confused about that, but there are some simple uh, tricks in terms of uh, tuning into the channels, understanding how it all works. Yes, it can be a little bit daunting to some of the folks there that aren't technical, but when you've got the digital TV tuned in, you've had an installer come in and uh, tune you all into these channels, treat all the, the channels, treat it like a big circle, okay? And that all the channels are sitting around the circle, and when you go on the channel up button, you're going around the circle this way, and when you're on the down button, you're going the other way. So you can't go wrong. So you've got three buttons to worry about on the TV, the on and off button, the volume control up and down, and the channel up and down. Now that keeps it about as simple as you could get it. So all the channels, you just keep flicking around. Sounds I like even I might be able to do that. Well, I, I know some of these digital TVs don't come with a school kid, and I know it can be a bit daunting for some of the folks that aren't tuned in uh, just yet. But there are plenty of good television antenna installers who can come and set you all up. If you have got uh, Sky, you can still watch us. Uh, with a UHF aerial, you can still watch Freeview, you can still have the whole lot. So whether you've got a satellite receiver, you can still watch all the terrestrial as well. If you've got Sky, you still can. Uh, so not a problem at all. And of course, Mainland's uh, eight channels are now on Igloo, Sky's Igloo, so. And Freeview's the other option, And Freeview, isn't it? yeah, yeah. Sure. And digital TVs. So we're on Freeview set-top boxes, we're on digital TVs, we're on Sky Zigloo, so there's plenty of opportunity for people to tune into us. Fantastic. And for those that are concerned about the costs, I mean, is it a costly exercise? <coughs> no, uh, it doesn't have to be. You can get a decoder off, uh, or a set-top box off Trade Me for $40, $50. Uh, yes, it's the low end of the market type, 
uh, you pay a little bit more you can get one that you plug a hard drive into and it will record your programs and play it back so you've got a set top box that will record and play back the programs when you want to watch them um, there are a few different things to digital in that it's quite critical to have your aerial set up all correctly uh, the rabbit ear type antennas um, are best left on rabbits and uh, they <laughs> really don't work that, that well at all so having the aerial installed properly is very important and uh, people can go to our website and see there's a list there of very good antenna installers that uh, they can come around and set you all up when you're away. And obviously getting a mainland would be a, a great option. Well there's eight channels you see, I mean mm. eight free channels so and two radio stations so yeah it just adds to the variety you know people say to me oh I don't want all these channels you know but what people tend to do is if you've got 30 40 channels to select from then you select which is your favorite and you may spend most of your time watching those particular channels so it gives more variety to the things that you're interested in personally and obviously very local <laughs> yes and of course it extends the sport of channel surfing doesn't it it rather does yeah and so what do we have on mainland that would be attractive to people in the Nelson region? Well of course we've got the local news with your good self and uh, Chrissy and various other folks on there. Uh, there is a lot of uh, documentaries, uh, there is news coming from overseas, from Deutsche Welle, from uh, CCTV9, from VOA. Uh, there's a whole lot of channels on there that give that variety. So <clears throat> yes we've got uh, local content, we would love to do more of it. But of course that's quite costly and we have to uh, keep that within the constraints of what our advertising income is. But uh, one of the things that we have seen uh, from the feedback is the huge, huge audience that has increased since we've become on the Freeview set-top boxes and, and Igloo and the, and the likes. The audience has increased dramatically so uh, that's, a good, that's very good for us that's and uh, good for our advertisers as well. Fantastic. So what do you say to the people that haven't yet tuned into digital? Well, what I would suggest you do is consider this. Do you need a set-top box or do you have a TV that's already got digital? If you have, you only need a UHF aerial. Hit auto-tune and everything will appear. If you don't have any of that, you might want to consider a new TV because if you're going to be spending, uh, say, 50 to $100 on a set-top box you may want to put that towards a new TV and there are plenty of good specials going at uh, many of the department stores around Nelson as I'm sure <laughs> you've heard many many times uh, so it may be a time to consider upgrading your TV uh, to one that has a digital tuner already in it otherwise yes a set-top box and you can contact any of the local TV installers they do a great job and they'll get you tuned in tell them that you want all the channels you want mainland you want freeview and they will tune that all in for you and uh, show you how to make it all happen so it shouldn't be a problem in terms of reception if you can see observatory hill which is at the end of princess drive uh, the southern end of the port hills of nelson if you can see that mast up on the hill there or you can see uh, the Takaka Hill, that means you will definitely get uh, reception from Freeview and Mainland. Other areas you'll need to talk to your TV antenna installer and they will be able to give you the best advice uh, for your uh, situation. But most people in the region should be able to get good reception from Mainland and Freeview. Well, it's a very exciting development. Thank you so much Gary for coming in today and talking You're welcome about and um, this thanks to you and all the change. team here doing a great job with the news too. Thank you. TV in the South Island goes digital on 28 April. If you don't have Freeview, Sky, Igloo or Telstra Clear TV by then, this is what you'll see on your TV. Waimea Telecommunications, specialising in free-to-air satellite TV, computer cabling, telephone systems, wireless and broadband internet installations. Call Julian Toon on 544-4203.
Thought you were too old for laser vision correction? If you're between 40 and 65, you may still be eligible. Laser Blended Vision is a new treatment, offering you freedom from glasses and contact lenses. Get a suitability assessment or a brochure now. See more clearly. See the eye centre. If you have a digital TV and you're watching Mainland now, you should be able to switch between the digital and analogue TV channels, including Mainland TV. Most digital TVs can switch between the digital and analogue TV channels. If you need help tuning into the new digital TV channels, please give us a call. Nelson TV and Video Services, 41 Halifax Street, Millersoga Car Park. And now to our community notices, taking place on Rabbit Island on Sunday 3rd of March is Choice Children's Day. Tasman District Council is hosting this afternoon of interactive games and activities as part of the National Children's Day celebrations. There will be activities the whole family can take part in. And currently on at the Richmond Library is the Nelson Potters exhibition from Tuesday the 5th of February until Saturday the 16th of March. The exhibition is on show in glass display cabinets from February to mid-March. Nelson Potters are well known for the quality and diversity of their work. Potters included in the exhibition are Peter Stewart, Daryl Frost, Katie Gold, Owen Bartlett, Shona McLean, Martin Lindley, Anna Barnett, Sue Newitt, Denny Miller, Royce McGlashan, Sue Dazzler, South Street Gallery and Steve Robertson. For more information on the contributing potters, check out the Nelson Potters Association website on nelsonpotters.co.nz. And on behalf of the team here at Mainland Television News, thanks for joining us. Have a safe weekend and we'll be back again next week with the latest in news and events from around the region. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air. Mandy Computing welcomes you to our new location at 124 Vanguard Street, Nelson. We offer an extensive product range of computer, hardware and software. We supply, install and service, provide support contracts, over 30 years of expert advice for home and business customers. Come and see Murray, Steve, Fraser and Denise, give us a call. 54680045 Mandy Computing we have megabytes of experience Nelson Tire Center great prices great service buy your own Bryford trailer all types all sizes see Colin Douglas for your tires and batteries In the center of Mapua is a magical shop called Tessa Mays with a whole lot of attitude you will see bags from Italy and France jewellery from Israel, beautiful quilts from Kashmir, Angora throws, furniture and cushions, wonderful products from all over the world and New Zealand made. The customers are saying they could stay all day. Call out and see the friendly staff at Tessa Mays, the village centre, Mapua, open seven days. Hi everyone, you're tuned to Mainland Radio 1 Digital and to your local FM radio station. I'm Larry London from VOA Music Mix, bringing you news on the hour from around the world, plus music 24-7, from the latest hits to those classic favorites to jazz on Saturday mornings, plus much, much more. You can contact us by Googling Mainland TV or follow us on Facebook. Cheers from the team at Mainland Radio 1 and VOA Music Mix.
If your eyesight is getting you into trouble, call the Wellington Eye Centre. We use some of the most advanced technology in the world. The Eye Centre. We'll get you seeing clearly. How happy are you with the quality of your digital prints? And how safe are those precious memories stored on your computer? Hi, I'm Simon from Nelson City Cameras. Quality 6x4 prints are easy using one of our eight photo kiosks. Join our loyalty club and print 30 photos or more, and the photos are only 39 cents each. As a member, you also get 50% off enlargements and other great benefits. But wait, there's even more. Our user-friendly kiosks allow you to create photo books, photo gifts, and even canvases. If you need a digital camera, binocular, tripod, we have a great range and selection, and our advice is free. We have a fantastic range of photo albums and picture frames to suit your needs and your budget. So print your memories. Don't hide them. Relive them. Come in and meet the team at Nelson City Cameras, Nelson's most experienced camera shop. 25 years serving Nelson. Everybody has a story that needs to be told. At the time of death, we reminisce, we honour, we remember. My family have been helping Nelsonians tell their stories with respect and dignity for over four generations. I'm proud to be part of the next generation that recognises every life is valued and meaningful. I promise that my professional and qualified funeral directors at Marsden House will assist you when you need it most. Talk to Marsden House about how you or your loved ones can be remembered. The majority of information in our life comes to us through our vision. With only one set of eyes to last our lifetime, it's important that you look after them. For over 20 years, Vizique Harrington Eye Care has led the way in providing the Nelson Tasman region with professional eye care. Our team are committed to providing you and your family with the highest standard of eye care. As part of this commitment, at Vizique Harrington Eye Care, we recommend Crizal lenses. Grizel is a revolutionary lens which repels dust and fingerprints. This means it's easier to clean and stays cleaner longer. Visit us at our Nelson, Richmond and Stoke practices and ask about our Grizel satisfaction guarantee.